Are you a female experiencing hair loss? Maybe you have something known as androgenic alopecia. My name is Dr. Tara Nella, and in this video, we're going to look at androgenic alopecia in a female in a little bit more detail than we've looked at in previous videos. So again, my name is Dr. Tara Nella, and if you're new to this channel, I just want you to know I'm making these videos to help you go beyond the basics of your health. Whether it's a confusing lab test, symptom, or diagnosis, I make these videos to help you better understand what's going on with your health. So if you like this kind of information on nutrition, health, hormone optimization, et cetera, click on the like button and don't forget to subscribe to the channel to get more videos like this one. Now for a quick disclaimer, the information in this video is for informational purposes only. It's not intended as a treatment for any health condition or as a substitute for seeing an actual doctor or medical profession. It should be used as an educational guide to deeper your understanding of your own health and treatment success. If medical attention is needed, don't delay in seeking that attention. All right, let's look at androgenic alopecia in females. So in this video, we're going to look at androgenic alopecia in females. So this occurs in females with PCOS, but can also occur as females enter menopause. And one of the key variables that are dictating this androgenic alopecia is the relationship between estrogens and androgens. So androgens, if you don't know, are things like testosterone, dihydrotestosterone, androstenedione, and other hormones responsible for creating the male sex characteristics like deep voice, facial hair, increased body hair, things like that. So when there's a relative abundance of the androgens relative to the estrogen signal, that's when you're going to potentially have some of this androgenic alopecia occurring in your scalp and affecting your hair. Both males and females do make testosterone, and that testosterone is then converted into either an estrogen-based molecule or a testosterone-based molecule. So it really is going to depend on how active those enzymes are in your body. The testosterone-based molecule is the DHT, also known as dihydrotestosterone, and the estrogen-based one is estradiol, also known as E2. The estrogen is going to be produced from converting testosterone via the aromatase enzyme into that estradiol, and then the testosterone can alternatively get converted into dihydrotestosterone via the 5-alpha reductase enzyme. And again, depending on the relative abundance or the activity of these enzymes will determine the relative abundance of those two molecules, the estrogen or the DHT. Sometimes these enzymes are under genetic control, and of course, there's environmental things that can influence them as well. So now back to the story on androgenic alopecia in females, it is the higher levels of DHT in particular that seems to have the deleterious effect on the hair follicles. And that's because DHT is about 10 times some would, would estimate even higher, 10 times stronger than testosterone itself in terms of you know how strong it binds the androgen, androgen receptor and how much it's actually stimulating that receptor when it does bind. So even small increases in the amount of DHT can translate into a big androgenic effect. It's not that that androgenic effect is going to have a noticeable change after one or two days. It's really about the months and years as that relative increase in the androgenic effect takes place. So if you have kind of your baseline here and then it changes a little bit, you know, a few days after, you're not really going to see a whole lot of difference. But if you take that out weeks, months, and years out, that's when that starts to have an effect on the body. Once you start to have an effect where your hair's falling out or you're noticing thinning, that process has been happening for a long time. Now, of course, there are other reasons why women might lose their hair and have female pattern hair loss. And I did do a video on that. You can check that out if you want to be sure those things aren't happening as well. But this is specific to the androgenic alopecia. And there are certain patterns that you'll see with androgenic alopecia as far as where the hair is falling out. Males are going to be slightly different than females with the pattern that you see. You can also confirm that this is going on through looking at some blood tests. If you're a female going through menopause, we already know that some of this is happening just because your estrogen levels 
are going to be much lower. And when that happens, there's a relatively higher amount of testosterone present in your blood in, of course, affecting the scalp as well. If you're still menstruating and seeing some androgenic alopecia going on, then there's probably some aspects of PCOS going on as well. So what you want to do is look at things like sex hormone binding globulin, dihydrotestosterone, total and free testosterone, estrogen, progesterone, DHEA sulfate, and androstenedione. dione. These are some of the things that will help you get a better idea of what's going on. When you're looking at the reference ranges, you want to pay attention to where you're at on that reference range spectrum. You may be normal, but it may be on the very edge of normal, meaning high. And that's an indicator that you have a relatively higher abundance of these androgen molecules here. And same thing with the estrogen is that there's a relative reduction in that estrogen too. It's the overall signaling that's going on there that we want to pay attention to. So once you kind of have a better understanding of what's going on there, then you can develop some treatment strategies to affect that increased androgen signal. There's topical treatments and oral treatments that can be used to help reduce that excess androgen signal. One simple way to do this is to focus on the sex hormone binding globulin molecule. So we want to increase the amount of sex hormone binding globulin that's present in the body, which will blunt some of the effects of those androgens. Sex hormone binding globulin, you can think of as like a gum sticking to a key, and the key is the androgen, and the keyhole is the receptor. And once that key goes into the receptor, it turns on the androgen signal. So if there's gum on the key, it can't do that, and it sort of blunts the effects of those androgens. So anything that will increase sex hormone binding globulin would be helpful in cases like this after you've confirmed that. There is a relative excess of androgens and even potentially an estrogen deficiency. So some simple things you can do is use phytoestrogens and soy isoflavone products. I'll put a link to one that we use in trust in the description below. By getting more sex hormone binding globulin, you're not allowing as much of those androgens to bind to the hair follicle where it's going to have the negative deleterious effect. Now, some women are just much more sensitive to those androgens too. So you don't necessarily have to have a really high amount of these androgens to see androgenic alopecia affecting females. And the same process is happening in males. It's just that in males, that relative abundance of androgens is there at a much earlier age because they're not producing as much estrogen and have much less of this sex hormone binding globulin. And so when women enter into menopause, that sometimes can get triggered as well. So remember that anything you do now is going to take three to four months before you actually see the effect of that firing, because it does take that long for the hair follicles to start to change and adapt. Now, of course, you may notice decreased shedding and things like that earlier on before the three to four month mark. But that three to four month mark is really what you want to be looking out for in terms of seeing the fruits of your efforts. So how'd I do? Does that help you better understand androgenic alopecia in females? Hopefully it does. If you have follow-up questions on anything in this video, please ask them in the comment section. I'm happy to answer your questions and I may do a separate video on that topic. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you next time.